Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 2 p.m. on Saturday in Queensland, Australia. Remember the time changed last week. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. I've been wondering, would you like to get something that was flown to space? And I'm thinking about creating a Patreon special for Everyday Spacer, and this could be patches or postcards, a cloisonne pin, something. I think I can offer something flown to space for you. We'd run the campaign and get the items. It would be a limited edition run of whatever it is. Uh, and then fly them to space and then send them to you. If that sounds cool, what would you like? And would you pledge today? Thank you for your consideration. Tonight's topic, Radio Meteor Zoo. We'll be back in 8.3 seconds. Here's the task. Help them identify meteors in radio data. Thank you so much, Jeff, for taking point on this topic tonight. What can you tell us about Radio Meteor Zoo? Well, as the name implies, it is a Zooniverse project. In fact, here, let's bring it up. We got some comments. You ready? Oh, sure. Hi, Janie Becker. Thanks for joining us. Pin badge patch. Yippee. <laughs> oh, and we actually see yes, your patches. name, Janie. Yeah, patches. All right. Oh, hey, Apollo. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means. Oh, and I uh, I have a link for you. Here we go. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, That's the project. Radio Meteor Zoo. Yeah. <coughs> um, it's very similar to one that we covered a couple, one or two years ago. Um, and I think it's run by the same group. Oh. Um, because I recognized some of the stuff in it. Oh, okay. But um, it's bouncing radio waves off of meteors, that, uh, actually off of the um, ionized trail from a meteor. Yeah, it's when it comes through the atmosphere, right? Right, yeah. It ionizes The heat ionizes the atmosphere be, okay. and leaves a trail behind it. Okay, all right. So that's that's the, the objective of the... Yeah, the that's task. actually the streak that you see if, if it's bright enough. Oh. These they're looking for things that are not big enough to make visible trails. Oh, Although okay. they, you know, they are happy to find those as well, but, ah. but the data is for the really small stuff. Okay. And that's what we're identifying. Interesting. And they designed this to find the really small stuff. Okay. So not stuff that's visible to the eye when you go out and look for a meteor shower, but it's still an ionized trail through the air. Right. And it does, cool. it does not look like that in the data here because of course they, um, and I'll, I'll show that. Um, it's actually a fairly simple project, but they give lots of instruction, lots of examples. Cool. And yeah, I always a, love them when they're very informative. I mean, that's and speaking of, yes, there are a lot of rabbit holes that you can go down <laughs> on this one. Um, so I, I'll show them, but I won't <laughs> buckle your seatbelt. Yeah, but I won't, I won't go down a lot of those rabbit holes. Okay. But, so this is very similar to what you're, what you'll be seeing. Alrighty, that looks like oh. actually three panels that are the same. No, maybe not. No, they're not. They're oh, just. Boy, they lined up pretty good, huh? Yep. And fifteen percent done. Although last week when I looked, it was ten percent done. Yeah, I remember so, seeing ten percent too. So yeah, this will. Um, so people are working is, on it. That's yeah. good. Well, it's a, like I said, it's a relatively simple thing to do, mm -hmm. and so it's something that you can do without, you know, without. Um, baking your brain <laughs> or a degree either huh <laughs> yeah it's drawing rectangles oh good all right those are fun this is the brams radio data um during um, meteor showers and it's a belgian project which is what what i recognized it from i recognized mm, right um, right yeah you know the layout and i pretty sure that they were looking at meteors before but they might have been looking at something else before but okay um, so I won't talk about it too much here because in the about, they, they go, they go into a lot more detail and yeah, that definitely looks familiar. In fact, here, let me make this, well, the images aren't getting much bigger. So, no. oh, well, um, but 
so this is the transmitter, and this is right here in Belgium. And it's not a big area. I mean, there are people in Belgium who are who probably are um, cheering the fact that they're bigger than the state of Rhode Island. All right, Cliff. Which is, thanks for joining us. Sorry about Facebook. <laughs> yeah, if you're not from the U.S., Rhode Island's about the size of a postage stamp. Um, but um, so, and these are the receivers here. And so this is what the transmitter looks like, and this is what a receiver looks like. And mm -hmm. so this should look familiar to those who have seen another one of these projects um, about a year ago. So they actually set up both parts of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, they're bouncing signals off. Uh, the, of off stuff. the atmosphere, right? Well, off, off of things in the atmosphere. Oh. They're hoping to get... Um, they're hoping to get meteors, but occasionally they get aircraft. Okay. But aircraft look a lot different than meteors in the data, so it's fairly easy to tell which is which. Got it. All right. So. Um, oh. Cliff. <laughs> oh, good. Yay, Internet's good. Oh, good. Yeah. Very good. Very cool. Yeah. No weather either, right? <laughs> um, I'm just glad... He's able to, to reach us. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So there are about 30 receiving stations. Mm. So all of these, they call them blue dots. They look black to me, but, you know, might be if this image got blown up, it, they might look different. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but it's at the frequency of 49.97 megahertz. Okay. At a total power of 150 watts. Mm. And so, um, you know, radio is good because data can be recorded 24 hours a day. Right. And does not depend on weather conditions. No. However, lightning strikes do show up in the data. And so you have to ignore those. Mm. Um, they are sensitive to meteoroids with lower masses that do not produce any visible light, but are much more numerous. Cool. So that's what they're looking for. All right. Um, and and meteorites is the term before before they hit the atmosphere yeah it's a meteor when it's in it's a meteoroid when it's before it hits the atmosphere so they're using it wrong there it's a meteor when it's in the atmosphere okay and it's the trail that you see and it's a meteorite when it once it's the on the ground, ground. right yeah. yeah meteorite men the show yeah <laughs> yeah so ah oh it's hot and a little cloudy okay yeah got it it could oh, be worse. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, it oh. has been. Yeah. Hope the cl clouds are enough to keep some of the sun off you, but not so so cloudy that you can't see anything tonight. Hey, oh. Daniel. Uh, he says, hi, space folks. Maybe SpaceX will offer an option for customers to fly small items to their payload fairing half insides to offer a space flown object souvenir service. Oh, I have a different service. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens there. If you have, if you have, uh, interested in something even if it's not something i mentioned let us know yeah um so um so they're focusing on meteor showers which are mainly dust particles so it's nothing that yeah you know, so it's not meteor showers that will be saying hey go look for this because they're nothing really yeah, even see. even the ones that you see if you go out on a dark night and look for meteor for a meteor shower they're going to be very small dust like particles too you can see those mm -hmm. uh the ones that are just they call and they call them bolos or boloids yeah boloids um they're like the size of a, a green pea and sometimes they they appear to break up and sometimes they have different colors that means the composition of them is some you know different colors mean different things um yeah you I, have a chart of that yeah on the patreon um page i have a nice meteor chart and, and periodically i'll share it on Facebook, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, even the ones that you see are very, very small, just dust yeah. particles, basically. Yeah. So, um, so that, so, and if you notice, now they go into what's a meteoroid, mm -hmm. you know, oh, there it misses is. us, hits us, had hit us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's a meteorite, meteor shower. I mean, you all know know this now. Of course, you'll never see this. This is a extremely long exposure, and it, it just detection. demonstrates that there is sort of a 
source. Yeah, there's a source point for some meteor showers. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great astrophotography image. Oh, beautiful! I mean, um, catching the source like that, ionization trail, and here's what they're doing: transmitter bouncing it off of the ionization trail to the receiver. Okay. And um, the and they have how many transmitters do they have? You said they have, they have one transmitter. One transmitter and like it's, 50 receivers. Yeah, I thought it was 36. Oh, sorry. It's I won't make everyone sick by zooming back up there. <laughs> sorry about that, folks. Um, it's some number. And of course, you can find it there. Yeah, um, it's right there in the about. Here's, here's that link again. Yeah. And I added it to the chat so you can have a clickable link. Yeah. And so this showing the different things. This is the beacon frequency. This is the transmitter. The long as, horizontal line? Yeah. As it's received by the receiver. Hmm. Because, of course, you're going to receive the signal that's sent out. That's the 49 whatever right. megahertz. Right. But as it hits things and spreads, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you see here. Mm. This is an artifact. Um, huh. Um, but this is an overdense meteor echo, wow. which means that it's either like a bunch of things together or it's something really big. Mm. Um these are they call them under dense meteor echoes but this is what you're looking for here the vertical these verticals yeah and you're also looking for these you do mark everything like this these slashes and swoops these are airplanes okay and basically because frequency is the vertical axis time is the horizontal axis mm -hmm. and as the airplane moves through you know past the um receiver or mm -hmm. You know, it's um, the frequency changes that's bouncing off of it, hmm. just either because you're hitting different parts of the aircraft or because, hmm. you know, it's coming toward you then away from you. So why is the the meteor ionization trail vertical? Just because it's an instantaneous view or? Yeah, it's fairly instantaneous. Okay. And if you notice, time goes this way. Yeah. So it doesn't happen because these are very small dust sized particles right. so they burn up fast okay so it just you know, for a short duration of time it um it's bounces back a bunch of stuff and then it's gone mm -hmm. and it looks like they can be above are, yeah. are they all above are they below what are we most of them are at or above but i okay. have seen some below oh okay interesting um and they you know they basically explain everything that i Said to you, the overdense meteors. And so this is great because it's very information rich. Oh, yeah, a lot. I mean, it will take a whole lot less for me to actually show you the doing of it than, oh, yeah. than all of this stuff because it's <laughs> okay. Um, and occasionally you get something like this, and that's so, usually someone mashing a mic nearby. Okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, airplanes. Ooh, this is squiggly. This is an airplane that actually changed direction in huh. th that time. So you're probably seeing different um, different hits off of the wings as it as it changes. Interesting. Um, hey, Cliff, I uh, get to see a few meteors uh, here when it's not cloudy, as it's dark here at home in the middle of a forest. Yay! Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And you know, so except second example of aircraft moving. It almost look like two. Yeah, could, could be bouncing off of different parts, or maybe it's a couple of, say, military aircraft flying in formation. Oh, I see. Uh, AC says the airplane trails are showing a Doppler shift, kind of the way a police radar gun will give you yeah. a speeding ticket with. Yeah, most awesome. of the time, yes. Sometimes that's not the case, as you can see from um, bouncing in. But yeah, if it's just going straight through, you're seeing Doppler shift. If it's doing something else, it gets squirrely. But you don't have to point those out. You just have to ignore them. Okay. And the importance of citizen science, um, you know, approximately 30 stations, more than 8,000 spectrograms are created every day. Yowza. Um, and so this requires automatic detection algorithms for media echoes. And, um, or, you know, so we're looking for those. The trained human eye is... The best detector in these cases cool um so we're getting the edge cases the cases that mm. were easy to solve they already did that mm. okay. um 
So their computers found a bunch and this is some and then we're, Yeah, this is the leftover. Okay. So, All right. So that is the um the and that's the research. The team. Um and they give the list of people and apparently they're all happy um, looking at meteors. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. The results. Now this is where if you really want to get into it, these are the results of past ones. And I think that these we they covered named one of it these. the Geminis 2021. Yeah. yeah. And they go, I scrolled down through the, to the year 2020s. Oh, wow. And I was not very, if you notice the size of the, um, of the scroll here, the scroll indicator here, we're it's not, a lot. yeah, there's a lot <laughs> of stuff down there. So I'm not going to go through all of it, but if you really want to get it, you know, oh, get into it. What a good rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's a good rabbit hole there. Education. Um, Talking about meteors, the Brahms, um, you can, this is a website that, um, here, this website right here, oh, I talks that place, more yeah. about, you know, the um, transmitter and the receivers. Yeah, look at, go up a little bit. Look at that radio telescope, a little bit more. The radio telescope, that's it. That that square thing that's suspended above the ground, that is the That's the transmitter. Telescope. That's the transmitter. <laughs> the radio. Yeah. yeah. That's the flashlight. Oh, light. transmitter, yeah. That's that's the flashlight. Uh, AC says their 150 watt transmitter is quite weak, and the reception for their meteor reflections will only be able to be picked up for at most a couple of hundred miles or so. Okay. Good, good thing they're doing this in Belgium. <laughs> that's about as far as they need to be. <laughs> and I suspect it's that weak so that they don't step on other transmitters. But mm. so again, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, they have, you know, again, more, more rabbit holes to, to jump down there. All right. Um, and so that's education and the FAQ. Now this, this is a very good FAQ. Um, mm. what kinds of meteors, how, yeah, I recall this, the last project we did, it was very good by them. Yeah. So this is, um, I don't remember it that well, so. Um, but this has a lot of, um, if they're close enough together side by side, put them in one rectangle because mm. you, there's no way to zoom in. So, you know, just, um, just do them all, you know, just do them together like that. If there's enough separation, then, mm -hmm. um, then do them like that. Um, and this is an example of an over dense. This is actually a big thing. Could be a small thing that exploded, but or it mm. could just be, you know, one part of it um, had multiple frequencies, and the rest of it seems like you would actually box around some of the other vertical things in there. Is that well? Yeah, they're just, just not you, done, or okay. yeah, that's not done yet. They're just pointing out the things that they want you to see. Okay, some specific cases yeah. for, and yeah. this is another, um, you know, complex one. Um, and again, right here, it's very faint. Wow. I'm not sure I would have yeah. that was a... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one of the scientists <laughs> marked this one. Oh, okay. And that most people would not think to mark that. Yeah, but this is probably like most of the projects, you know, a variety of people are mm -hmm. are doing the task. And if everybody mm -hmm. says the same thing, it's probably good. If yep. people have a lot of variety, then... Oh, and there's that one that's complex, but it doesn't include the vertical aspect of it. Right, yeah. Yeah, that one right uh, far left, yeah. Yeah, this one? No, the far left. Yeah. Yeah, and there's verticals right there. Yeah. Which should probably be marked separately. Oh, but, I see. Okay. Um, But yeah, so this looks like they just happened to take a picture of a big, you know, of big stuff coming down. AC's got a comment. Uh, Before the U.S. shut down the space picket fence transmitters, with tens of kilowatts, you could do the same reception of meteors for 100 miles or more at 220 megahertz. Yeah. I, I think we need to have you on our show, AC. <laughs> well, the picket <laughs> fence, that, that's the one the picket that, fence, but yeah. some of those other stuff, I'm not. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, and Scott says, I wonder if this data could be used to later locate 
fallen meteorites that were big enough to not burn up? Well, um, that's a good question, but most of these I think are going to be pretty yeah, the, pretty small. Yeah, and these don't really show direction. They just show existence. Mm. Okay. Now, there are multiple receivers, so I suppose if you were to get into the raw data, you could, if you isolated the same meteor on multiple transmitters, you could probably figure out where it was. I wonder how you could tell, though. That's Well, I suppose if it's big enough. Yeah. If it's big enough, people are going to Well, yeah, and if you've got it. multiple transmitters, <laughs> you can correlate. And I think that's what they're doing anyway, Okay. is that they're correlating them between multiple transmitters. Mm. We're just not on that part of it. We're on the... You oh know, yeah, I'm sure there's them. I'm sure there's multiple aspects of every one of these mm -hmm. projects is just what comes to the you know mm -hmm. Zooniverse for crowdsourcing, that kind yeah. of thing. You ready for more? Oh, sure. we got a comment. Scott, that is a good question. I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you ready? Yeah. Okay. So what do you do if you don't see the beacon signal? Oh. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Some of the transmitters are far away, some of them Mm. have stuff between them and the transmitter mm -hmm. you know so sometimes you just don't get a good beacon signal okay um so not a biggie right doesn't really affect the project the, yeah the task. now here when you get a vertical that goes <laughs> all the way through it since they can do it rain or shine mm -hmm. these are lightning strikes wow now since this is taking up a huge patch of sky you know, the lightning strikes look like there's a lot of lightning strikes over a small area, but that could be a very large area okay. that you're seeing them. Um, <clears throat> so these are relatively nearby strikes, hence their brightness. Hmm. Um, the fainter ones are farther away strikes. So, okay. And this is, that'd be quite the sky show right there. Yeah. Because these are all lightning strikes. And how would you pick out the meteor? Well, they, you can there. still see them in here. Wow. You might not catch them all because of all of the lightning strikes, but they'll catch some of them. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you'll have repeating bands, and that's probably human origin. Okay. So, and, you know, and if you see a me meteor in a band, they just say mark out the meteor. Mm -hmm. If okay. it's distinct enough. Um, and that's... That's it for that portion. Um, the field guide is has some stuff of what's not an echo. So that's good to look at. But I think once you've seen what I showed you, it's a repeat of the stuff. Mm. Um, so they just emphasize what are unusual yeah. ones. Yeah, so let's let's get to the interesting stuff. <laughs> the task itself. Yeah. Cool. So the tutorial, um, good stuff. It gives you the basics of, yeah, mark them. Um, yeah, this is pretty simple to put a box around them. Right, yeah. And basically don't mark too big and just basically mark the, the thing itself. So they're saying that this, um, this, act, this box is too large. So try to, and that's too small because there's stuff going above them. Below it. So they're just saying, just grab what you can see of it. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, this is mama bear. Okay. Or baby bear. Cold, uh, baby, baby bear, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, the goalie, hold hit the Goldilocks zoom, zone. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, um, so they're saying just mark them all. Okay. And, you know, it's like a Pokemon. Collect them all. Um, ignore the um, the verticals and ignore the airplanes. Yeah. And that's it. And so you see one that um, it has everything that, that you saw there. So let's. Um, There's quite a few in there. Yeah. They. Um, so you rectangle. This is going to be. I'm not going to They usually have these side by it. side. So this is kind of interesting. It's a little bit yeah. more vertical. Yeah. I think maybe if I. There we go. Oh, I see. Okay. It's there. It'll be less scrolling. However, it's going to be harder, be harder to do. See. <laughs> yeah. So I think I'll scroll it up a little bit and not do too many of them here. Okay. Just show you like this one. Yeah. It looks like there's at least one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. Five. There's a lot. 
and then do this one. I think you still got it. Try try to make another one without hitting the red because I think it's still see the X. Oh no, the X. If you hit the X, no, the, no, the the cursor tool. Yeah, if you hit hit the okay, X. Okay, I'm trying. I'm saying try to do another one without going down. I think you can still continue to do rectangles. Yes. Oh. Yeah, just try it out. Yeah, there you go. I thought so. Oh, those are separate, aren't they? Yeah, I kind of have to. <laughs> I can't really mark them, but it is taller than that, so I'm going to make that. Okay. So you're thinking maybe I can just do another yep. rectangle. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay. That makes that a lot faster. Yep. When I was testing that myself, <laughs> I didn't do that. Yeah, so. so you don't have to go and grab the rectangle to every single yep. for every single task in this. Yep. Oh, good. And you can't get rid of them with that circle with the X in it. Yep. And this is a squiggly, That's but they said complex. Yep, yeah. Complex. And look at this one right here. Yeah, you got one, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. Wow. And I'm only working the middle of the image. Yeah. There's still stuff on the yep. um, left hand side that I haven't done yet. So it could be, could be varied. Could be varied. Yeah. Just depends on what what the image is. But this is typical from what I've what I had seen. Um, yeah. Can't tell on that one, yeah. so I'm just gonna kind of do that one. Then I'm gonna include two here. Yeah. Just because I can. I just want to write on the edge here. And this is the basic task, right? This is yeah. This pretty is, much all that it's. This is this is it. I just. All they're asking you to do. Yeah, I wanted to finish it up so that I could hit the done button and show you what <laughs> yes. happens. But um, there's just lots of them in here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and well, as with most of these, don't worry too much about quote screwing up because they do have they do show these to other people as well. And yeah, I think more. one of them we saw was like ten to fifteen, and I think really the purpose is to okay is everybody saying about the same thing or do we have some weird things we have to go and look at ourselves yeah, so. so there done. Yeah, i wouldn't worry too much about there and then of course nothing special when you hit done it just pops you to the next one so that's really it you put the boxes around and then you hit done and it gives you another yep another view yep. cool all right hey that's pretty good but there's lots of really good information that's what yeah i mean I you, you'll spend a lot of time um running down the rabbit hole and if you want something that you can just do a bunch of like mindless drawing boxes that's i mean there's only a few things to worry about about that shouldn't be there so yeah. all right and um so it's not quite counting rocks on an asteroid <laughs> we know who you are <laughs> all right so if you have any questions please put them in the chat uh, I'm going to cover some stellar events this week. It's kind of kind of a busy week. And we've been hearing about a really big deal at the end of the month. Uh, some five planets in a row. I think uh, I think Cliff, I saw that right before I came on, Cliff. So if you've got more information about that, I'd love to, to hear from you. The Globe at Night project is still going. And this is uh, going through March 22nd. And remember, you go out at night, you look for the targets. And in this case, they have a couple of options uh, for both Southern Hemisphere and Northern Hemisphere. And you basically can get a picture. You can report on it. If it's cloudy, they're trying to find out light pollution anywhere in the world. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yes, God. Much better than County Rocks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, Still, I, that must have been a pretty cool project, though, to be part of that. I, I had one of counting craters on Mars. <laughs> yes. I remember that. All right. So the, the objects you're looking for, for the globe at night, that's the project that's still going to the 22nd in the Southern Hemisphere, you'll want to look for either Canis Major or Orion. In the Northern Hemisphere, it would be Orion or Gemini. March the 17th, Pluto and the Moon are in conjunction. Also, Mercury is in superior conjunction. March the 19th, Saturn and the Moon are in conjunction. March the 20th is the equinox, and in the sun is basically over the equator. And, of course, in the northern hemisphere, we're saying, hey, it's the first day of spring. And in the southern hemisphere, they're saying first day of fall, right? Oh, and I see Daniel. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Radio Luxembourg, the 150-kilowatt 
shortwave broadcaster went off the air permanently this month. Oh, after 90 years. But it helped scientists discover ionosphere, ionosphere RF, module. RF modulation back in the 30s. No kidding. I have heard of that. Huh. 90 years. That's that's a long time. Uh, and they gave us a time. It's uh, 5.24 p.m. Eastern for the equinox. Uh, March the 21st is a new moon. That is a really good time to go out and do some observing. Uh, also, Mercury and the moon are in conjunction. And Neptune and the moon are in conjunction. March the 22nd. Everyone's in conjunction. <laughs> Those three. Uh, March the 22nd is the future birthday of James T. Kirk in 2228. <laughs> and Jupiter and the moon are in conjunction this year. March the 24th uh, is our Friday night show again. We're going to do something a little bit new. Stay tuned. I will get into that very soon. Find us on Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. That night is Venus and the Moon are in conjunction. Also, Uranus and the Moon are in conjunction. Okay, some other events and activities. The Space Symposium, which is a live event, so you actually have to you know, get there. Um, April 17th through the 20th, 2023 at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs, Colorado, U.S. Um, it's hosted by the Space Foundation. Um, the Space Education Symposium, sounds very similar, is the very next day, Friday, April 21st, 2023. It's virtual, however, I think. Yes. Right? And yeah. that's the same group that you attended last November. Yeah. But I won't be able to do it this one because it's yeah, when it's I work. Friday, yeah. But you can. Um, it's a full day conference. Well, in the um, Pacific time, it's 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you can translate that. Um, might not be very convenient times in Australia, but it, not. Yeah, it was very good. I enjoyed it a lot. And, and we got a bunch of our speakers from, yeah. a bunch of guests from that event. Yeah. I think there's a few more to reach out to. So yeah. yeah. It's hosted by the Human Space Program. Um, which is related to the overview effect, which Frank White started. Right. So if you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, astronomy, we'd love to share our live. Join us again next Friday, March the 24th. I want to review NASA Solve. Go ahead and show that. And I got a comment here too while you're doing that. Have you any pictures for the talent show as I have a few to send you? Send pictures for the talent show. We're doing an audience talent show so far cliff i have zero so please send them we will start to put together a show for that when we get eh, at least two or three people um probably probably more than three to two but three more people we will actually hold um a, a toilet episode on that oh yep two <laughs> two p.m here in oz yeah okay. right uh yeah and we're gonna here's the so here it is real quick it's called nasa solve I'm going to review the whole site and it's kind of interesting because there's some crowdsourcing things like we've been talking about. There are also some ways to win prize money. So they have a few, few different things. Mm -hmm. So I'll cover that site next Friday. Um, anything from you? Um, no. Anything from you? I'm going to take notes. Oh, yep. We got one. What? Oh, wait, Janie Becker is first. Janie said, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Blessings for a safe weekend. Absolutely. Thanks so much. <laughs> what? The, the prize money? Yeah, you can win prize money from NASA. Uh, Scott says, I have no talents, but my playing pictures are on the way. Scott, I bet you know something really cool. Uh, we just have to figure out what it is. Heck, you counted rocks on Bennu. <laughs> I think that's amazing. You could do a little report on that. That'd be fun. Remember when the kids used to do the little three-fold? <laughs> no. Seriously, do up a little write-up or something? We'll include it because we know all of you are doing something interesting. And when you think about it, when we go out there, we're going to need everything. We're going to need cops and lawyers, sadly. Uh, we're going to need no lawyers. Lawyers do some really great work for us, too. Um, we're going to need cocktail waitresses. We're going to need... I mean, everything, because right now there's nothing out there, basically. So. And if you want to, uh, since this is a talent show, if you want to dress up as the various <laughs> planets and do a musical, hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we can show some short videos. 
Great. Oh, thank you very much, Cliff. We really appreciate you being here. We really like to bring you stuff. Oh, yes. Well, and you know, out there, it could be very important to have things like that because it can be a very stressful environment. There's lots of things to worry about. Like you don't want to, you don't want to do something wrong because you could kill people. I mean, you really do have to be careful. We take a lot for granted here. We have air. We have clean water. We have food aplenty out there. You've got to take everything. You've got to figure everything out. There's, yeah, so I would love that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, folks. Have a really great week. Yeah. And we'll see you on Friday. Oh, we got one more. Janie, I need that. There you go. Janie and Scott. Help each other out. <laughs> Good night, folks. See you yeah. later. Oh, let's do the, <laughs> let's do this.